it up. Yo, long hairs, welcome to episode 108 of Let It Ride. Here we talk long hair in business, advocate for hair equality, and celebrate men's long manes with hair whips and high fives. If you're a guy with long hair, you know you're in the right place. I'm El Moreno, and I'm here at the Long Hairs HQ in beautiful San Diego, the new HQ. I am solo hosting today. El Rubio is out enjoying some of that beautiful powder up in the Eastern Sierra range. We all wish we could be there. Right. So today on the show, we have our returning guest. He is a professional artist, musician, entertainer. Ladies and gentlemen, the man I have here is a serious hair guy. He has contributed six videos to the Long Hair's YouTube channel and been featured in a lot more of the blogs. He is the hardcore, hair-whipping, weightlifting, long-haired rocker with the curls, that crush. Everybody, welcome to the show for the third time. El Sergio What What's up, bro? Introduction, <laughs> man. Try you know, best. I need to hire you before every show. Dude, that's right. Just just do that. Get a hype man good. on stage, really <laughs> set the tone. I didn't know I needed one until today. So, Dude, what's up, man? It's great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you so much. You guys have come a long way since I was on the podcast, podcast Last, number yeah. 19. No, I'm talking about the first. Oh, very first one. Yeah, yes. man. Yes. From from a garage to this new beautiful HQ. And um, everywhere in between, because we did a show with you at the old yep. HQ in Chula Vista. So we had you there, and dude, it's great yeah. to have you here. New oh. set, new vibe. It's, yeah. It's thanks. pro now, right? <laughs> it is pro, man. Thanks for having me. And, and again, dude, I told you this, you know, right when I first walked in, just... I'm so proud of you guys. I'm not surprised because, you know, when you work hard every single day and consciously go towards something with a great team, I mean, great things are going to happen. So, uh, you know, you guys embody all of that. And man. I'm super stoked for you guys. Dude, thank you, man. And you know what? You've been an inspiration to us, dude. Pa- pa- paving your own way the way you do. Yeah. Finding your own niche, sticking in there. And just driving hard. I mean, that's really all we're doing too. So I think that's why we have a lot of in common, Absolutely. a lot of love for each other, feel uh, connected. Absolutely. Is uh, we've really just kind of forged our own ways through our own passions and just figuring it out. Well, and uh, I can speak for both of us when I say we're just getting started. <laughs> just getting started. Dude, that is right, man. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, dude, first off, looks like you've still been in the gym, looking jacked, looking tan, looking uh, looking good, dude. A little bit, man, a little bit. You know, it, it's it's one of those times in the day where you can just throw on the headphones. You know, I personally, I'm not those... Those guys who, you know, do a set and sit on the bench and get on their phones. I, my phone doesn't yeah, exist exactly. when I'm, you know, Straight training. Working, barely yeah, stopping. Yeah. I worked out with you. I know what's up. Yeah, you know what's up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so it's fun, man. And, you know, with what we do, we're always on the computers doing this, that. So yeah. the gym is a place or, you know, hiking, whatever you do, it's, it's a place where you can truly just unplug yeah. all of that. Definitely focus so. in. And build That's on awesome. yourself. Build. Yeah. So l- real quick, just for anybody who's missed, let's just circle kind of back. Just give a refresher exactly, you know, what you do. Just so uh, everybody's just reacquainted. I, I know there's tons of people who know for, and they know how veteran you are with your hair. And when we say you're a serious hair guy, you're a serious hair guy. 22 right. year anniversary, I believe we're coming up on here. Yeah. Somewhere around uh, there. I've kind of lost count, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's about that long. But you're still doing art, you're still doing music, right? Yeah, and right now, like, you know, my description, I've been going to a lot of uh, events, and, and, you know, they naturally say, well, what do you do? And I've kind of switched it up. Instead of saying I'm an artist musician, you know, I I basically bring about the idea that I make people happy and make a difference in people's lives 
with what I do. And yeah. they go, well, what do you do? I do art and music. There we go. Okay. Right? Because cause there, there, there is that difference, right? Um, some people just create art for themselves, and that's fine, too. Yeah. Right? And, uh, man, what I've been doing nowadays, ever since I focused on how can I take what I do, uh, you know, with my paintbrush and with my music, it's like, how can I help people? Dude, life just changed, man. Yeah. Life just uh, almost overnight. That's it's cool. a whole different energy. Yeah. You know, how, how is it that you're actually helping people through your arts? So I guess the main gig is, um, with what I do, see being an artist and musician, I have this really cool show, as you know, yeah. um, but some of your viewers might not, not know. I have this really cool show to where I basically, I play live music, and then instead of taking a break, I'll do a, a large uh, portrait of you name it. You know, let's just say I play a Rolling Stones song, and then instead of taking a break, I'll put down the guitar, put on a Rolling Stones playlist, and then paint Mick Jagger. Yeah. You know, a large scale portrait, and then and then I'll go ahead and auction that off if I'm at a charity event. Yeah. And what that does is. Now people, and I put this in people's heads, now this is not just a painting. Now it's an experience, yeah. right? Because they saw it done start to finish in, in minutes. And so people, people always want to tell that story. They want to purchase it yeah. and then tell that story. It's not just nice. a painting anymore. It's sure. like, dude, I was at this event. You know, I do a lot of stuff for veterans, you know. I was at this veterans event. It was for the Marines, whatever, whatever. This artist painted this flag with this. Da -da -da. And they get to talk about it with excitement each time. Because, again, it's not just a painting. It's an experience. That's phenomenal, man. Yeah. Well, dude, a lot of what you do takes a lot of confidence approaching a blank canvas approaching a stage in front of hundreds of people uh you know where where do you find your confidence and and how have you developed it over the years um you know confidence for me just comes from showing up man um that's that's what i you know people need help with confidence it's just like i just have those two words show up yeah you know, because the more you show up, the more you're going to learn. Yeah. Um, if there's a if there's a shy kid, let's just say in high school, trying to meet chicks, oh, well, how do you meet chicks? You got to show up. You got to show up in front of them. You got to talk to them. You will never find out how to do that if you don't show up in that sense. Sure. You can always just sit back and just watch every other guy yeah. do it, right? And, you know, we've all seen that story on like there's this maybe this big big kid you know who always gets teased by all these jocks but he's the one talking to the chicks it's because he shows up man and he just and he's happy and he brings a certain energy and, and confidence mm -hmm. by showing up so i i think for for me that's how i cultivate confidence and that's how i just yeah keep it going man yeah and 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 always keeping in mind that you you are gonna you are gonna fall Sure. Um, but fall forward and get back up as quick as you can. Definitely. You know, people want to seek out to do things, uh, you know, they have goals and, and strategies to reach those goals. But a lot of people will quit once they run into a wall. And that's yeah. just, then, then your confidence just goes down to zero. Totally. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, and dude, it's like, to me, anytime I've really, you know, got on a roll where I'm, feeling very confident about everything that I'm doing right is when it's just simple day-to-day -day things tying it together you know you do you get a workout in this day you get right. a workout in the second day or you get your your tasks done every day or you read this book that you've been wanting to read you finally do it uh, right you actually listen to the thing inside of you that's telling yes. you like hey do this because bro man, we can go all day on that topic or doing that or whatever actually go do this thing and you're going to feel so much better when you actually listen to that voice right and a achieve what it is that that thing is that's been telling you that you need to go do this that's just a little crank up on the confidence and in about stringing all that together right and that's how you get a, get a rhythm going yeah yeah and i think you know um sprinkle in a little bit of uh, intention in there right because yeah. some people are doing things for the wrong intentions right when you ask somebody you know why do you want a mercedes 
it's like, oh, well, because it's a nice car. Well, yeah, we all know it's a nice car, but do you want it because it's a nice car or because, you know, it'll have people think a certain way of you, mm-hmm. right? It's like there's intention there. Yeah. You know, is it pure? Is it not? I mean, right. I personally like to leave with the most purest intention possible with everything I'm consciously doing. Yeah. You know, so yeah, man, just show up. Yeah. So what's that look like for you on a day-to-day basis? I know you're big into reading. We just, you know, we know you, you're you working out, working on yourself, showing up to your gigs, working on your art. Right. I mean, is that kind of the daily routine or what? Um, yeah, that, that's the daily routine. Um, but, you know, I can speak for the both of us and, and what we do is like sometimes you'll get people who aren't saying the nicest things about you or your company. Sure. You know, and and so part of the confidence building is just not to actually to know yourself well enough to not even think a speck yeah of any of that yeah like hey that's okay yeah say what you want yeah say say (laughs) what you want and i again i can speak for the both of us by saying like look we're awesome (laughs) if you really got to know us we'd be best friends yeah we'd be best friends sure you know it's like it, it's you don't have to listen to that yeah but too many people don't know themselves well enough haven't spent that me time yeah you know to cultivate that so how, how often do you just like sit and just let yourself think like sit in a chair you know and whether it's meditating or just you know chilling by yourself or no phone nothing just let your mind go the very first minute, the very first five minutes of every morning. Really? Okay. I wake up. I don't touch my phone. Um, I get in child's pose and I repeat, yes, please, more, thank you. Okay. For five minutes. Really? In silence. Yeah. I don't touch the coffee machine. I don't get a glass of water. It's, I open my eyes, go to my couch, hit child's pose and just say those you know, four words, man. Huh. When you're doing Every that, morning. are you like focusing on the rhythm of the words or does it, does your mind just kind of start thinking about, I mean, you're saying the words, but is your mind going somewhere else? No, no. I, I think it's not where my mind goes. It's where my feeling goes. And it's just a feeling of just like gratitude, man. There we go. Like, it's just, yes, please more. Thank you. Yeah. And it's not in a selfish sense, right? I mean... You're affirming the first thing, first word, yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Let's bring it on. Yeah. Yeah. Because too many people think of things and go, uh, I don't know, or oh, maybe. Yeah. Or no. Right. First word is yes. Yeah. Yes, please. More, thank you. Okay. You know, and more can be, you know, give me more uh, confidence sure. to tackle the day. Yeah. You know, give me. I was going to, I can't cuss on this. whatever. Yeah, you can cuss on it. Yeah. You know, give me uh, uh, more ways to say, you know, fuck that or fuck this and let's do this. Right. It's. Sure. Yeah. And then, and then thank you. You're already thanking for the day, everything that's going to happen, good and bad. Right. And by the way, I don't believe in good or bad. Things just are. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, And every successful person will tell you that. Right. It's like they don't get to a spot. If nothing bad happened to them, they wouldn't be in the spot right. they're in. Yeah. So bad things have to happen. They have to happen. That's how you grow. That's how you overcome. That's how you have to dig into right. you know, who you are to solve a problem, get past something. And that can really go in, in anything. If mm-hmm. it's, I mean, we could, let's cut it, let's cut it into what it is. Uh, this show's about hair and what our business is about. Yes. I mean, you got to like, you're going to have roadblocks when you're growing your hair out. Oh <laughs> yeah. But, and all you listeners, and, and guess what? You're all the viewers know that you you're going to have bad days with your hair. And right. as long as you know that, you know, even if you walk up to, if you're single, you walk up to the hot chick and she's like, your hair is weird. <laughs> like you got, you have to cultivate something to say or, or yeah. a feeling that say, yeah, it's freaking weird. Isn't it? Dig back to that confidence. <laughs> like, though. yeah, Find it is confidence. weird. It is weird. And I'm growing it out. Yeah. I'm growing it out. And, and actually and I'm growing it out to donate to kids. That's what I was about for to the say. Great cut, the great cut. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and then it's going to go from that's weird to, oh, yeah. <laughs> what's the great cut? And then do it. You're locked in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, dude, there's uh, 
awkward stages galore. And it's not just for curly haired guys. I see on on some of the posts and the long hairs that, you know, all these straight haired guys, like some hair is like popping out here and yeah. the, this hair is going forward. This, you know, it's quite funny. So did we know you are a master at the curly hair. We've documented it pretty well on uh, the blog and on the YouTube channel, which has been a lot of fun. You're due up for another video, actually. Let's we go. Get you booked in right here. Yeah, man. Um, but, uh, dude, 22 years of long hair, I mean, that is half, that's more than half my life. Yeah. That is uh, phenomenal. And yeah. I think your life too, right? Yeah. How old are you? 36. Uh, I'm 30, I'll be 36, 36 this year. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you've had long hair for more than half of your life. Yeah, but it helps when you've grown up in a hair salon, right? Yeah. My mother's been doing hair since before we were born, and, and uh, so I've... I've seen what it takes, you know, even at an unconscious level being a kid. Yeah. And uh, when I started growing it out, my mom, of course, gave me pointers and just kind of stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, dude, we focus a lot on masculinity around here. I think you're kind of an interesting, you know, character to talk about because not only is, do you have the hair, but you've had a ton of experience with the hair. You've been really taught about the hair from a very feminine angle, right? which is interesting. Also, I think your fashion and kind of style and swag and how you, you know, you paint your nails sometimes. All the time. You know, you do. I've never seen my, my toe, like the color of my toenails. They're always painted. <laughs> always. You do a lot of things that maybe are considered feminine, uh, but you still are very much a masculine guy, dude, you know, bro, whatever. Uh, how, how, what is your thought on masculinity and like, how have you cultivated who you are and your identity and stuff and wh where does it play? Well, I think, you know, masculinity to me, it's, it's, um, well, they, they asked, uh, Nikki six from Motley Crue a similar question. Like, you know, what is rock and roll to you? Right. Yeah. And that's kind of like how I informing your question. And it's like doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that's and, rock and roll and yeah. not, and not caring. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Like see people at first glance, would look at my toenails and be like, bro, I get it all the time. Like, bro, what, why do you, why do you paint your toenails? And I, I go, well, why not? That's weird. First of all, you know, why not? Second of all, well, I'm an artist. I like to add color to this world. Yeah. Whether it's on my toes or on a paintbrush on a canvas. Yeah. Um, third of all, the, the quick story I can give on the very first time I painted my toenails mm -hmm. is it made someone happy. Okay. Um, I, I went to this nail salon and I was with a, with a girlfriend at the time. And of course she chose like the color, I don't know what it was, pink or whatever. And I told the, the nail tech, I was like, yeah, I'll do the purple. You know, and she just like, hee hee. She just kind of laughed. I could tell she was having a bad day. Her energy was very low. The girl actually doing the nails? Or? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. You know, and so she kind of gave me like a little giggle and I really wasn't at first. It was just to kind of mess around. And so she just kind of giggled. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, no, I want you to really do it. Yeah. Right. And the whole time she was just like giggling. Now I can see her smiling. Nice. I mean, it was a totally different energy. So, uh. you know, for me personally... Like, people don't know that story. Mm. Every time I look at my painted toenails, I don't care what anybody else, I don't give a shit what they think. <laughs> I'm like, it brings me back to making people happy. Yeah. You nice. know? That so, so that's it. That's why, that's why when you go to judge people, and, and we're human, everybody, you know, you look at somebody, and there's a part of us that judges right away. But now I just am very conscious of that. You know, there's some... If a dude is like sporting a baggy ass Raiders jersey and yeah. has bald head with tattoos, like I'm like, that dude's probably cool as shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Whereas before I'd be like, oh, who's this thug? Yeah, you know? right. Because I, I switched that mindset because I realized as a musician, artist, and as someone who does feminine things like mm -hmm. paint toenails and have long hair, I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm a cool dude. I wish people would just, just say what's up. Yeah. Right? It'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. So, dude, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Love that, man. Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, I got two little girls, obviously, wife, right. finally had a boy, Jack, in mm -hmm. the house. Uh, but yeah, it's made me being a girl dad really uh, kind of think of where my place, my, 
where my masculinity matters mm -hmm. in raising my daughters. Ah. You know, and I, I think mean, that's going to be a lifelong journey and it's going to be through phases as they go through their kind of different cycles of their life and right. but where they're at now in their toddler phase and stuff. It's really important. Um, I found for, for me to show them, you know, kind of the power of, of dad, of, uh, you know, we go do these adventure things like what a good put, man is put them right? on a little bit of edge sometimes like a little scared to go do this, but they do it. And now they're like, yeah, built their confidence. Like if it's jumping off something or jumping off a ledge to me in the pool or right. you know, these like little confidence builders that they don't so much get maybe from their mom all the time they right. definitely do in in a in a different aspect right you know? right but, uh where they're at right now it's 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 interesting to like see how develop developing them as you know their athletic side and teaching them about their power and what they can do and watch how fast you can run and let's right. work on how let me show you how to run right and right, you know, right, let's right. learn how to ride a bike and let's learn how to skateboard and all these things that they're like let's, scared of daddy's the one who like teaches them right how to do it and like that's uh you know that's part of this journey in parenthood right now where i could really see my masculinity shining in in changing my kids of or, you know, getting them to do something. So are you going to be one of those dads, the shotgun on their first date? <laughs> like you better bring my daughter Dude, I don't home know. at we'll 10, see. We'll see how it plays 11, out. No I think <laughs> it will be super fun. I mean, they're girls, they're beautiful little girls. I often think like, man, they're going to be, you know, teenagers before I know it. Then they're yep. going to be 20. Then they're going to be getting engaged and all that. And yeah, that's a lot of years away. But as we all know, I mean, time travels fast. And when, especially when you're a parent, you really have to cherish these times when they're little, you know, right, like zero right. to five, they're never going to be like that again, yep. ever. Like, so if you are on your phone, missing the moments to play with them, if you're too busy working and I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, I've, I've been tr trying to be better about it, but I'm constantly thinking about the business and being like, I want to work on, I got to do this. I got to do that or got to do that. But I feel like you're pretty damn good about well, like, like I've been getting creating better. Those. I've been getting better. But there's times you're just like, Hey, all of that could wait. I need to give this little girl everything right now. Right. And cause also, I'm never going to have a chance to do this with her right now as she is. Sure. In three years, she's going to be different. You know, she's going to be bigger. I won't have a chance to do it with either girl, either of my girls, Sadie or Sienna. So really trying to live and cherish in these this time right now. And I'm excited because I have Jack now and get a the whole boy. new experience from the boy the side boy. to go from, you know, this zero to the five phase and... I think it will be interesting to see now how the, my masculinity plays in with my son. That's and right. And how much That's more, right. like, is there more of a connection? Is there different things? Is it, you know. I, oh, you so, know it's going to be. Yeah. Like, are you talking about different connection between your daughters and your yeah, boy? Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, dude. You yeah. know it's going to be that way. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. If for, for the good, for the better, for the whatever. I mean, I don't know. It, it, no matter what, it's going to be different. Right. Like, just like you said, there's no good or bad. It's just, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen with Jack. You know, it's just, it is going to be different. That's incredible. Now, <laughs> now what, what are the, uh, the age differences? So Jack is five months. Sadie just turned three and Sienna is about to turn five. Oh man. Yeah. That's and a great family right there. Oh man. It's phenomenal. That's well, speaking awesome. of family, dude, you just got engaged, so yep. congratulations. Thank Cheers you. To that. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Cheers. Someone tamed the dragon. <laughs> dude, that's that's what I tell everybody. I, I even say that live on stage, too, you know, uh, and it's just so funny because a lot of people that go to the shows, they've known me for, you know, I've been here 15 years now, so at least yeah. 13, 14 when I got into the scene, and... Yeah, people can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> but I found a good well, one, Well, because you're, you're like the rock star, right? And you got the Speedos yeah. and you're fucking ripped. <laughs> That's another thing. You want to gain confidence? <laughs> yeah. Throw on a Speedo and go to the pool just, <laughs> just and don't give a shit. Just see what happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you and Chris, you know, you guys, you and El Rubio are, are really into the, to <laughs> the, the thigh short game. <laughs> thigh game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> but uh, the first time I threw chubbies on, I definitely and and went out in public and everything. I felt very much challenged in my appearance and what was happening with right. people looking at me or whatever. So another great confidence uh, exercise you could do if you're looking to build some, throw throw on some chubs. It really, yeah, no, it really is, man. And you know what? At the end of the day, dude, like this is what I think all the time. Like at the end of the day, this is not really ever going to fucking matter. Right. Like yeah. no, nobody's going to see you in a pair of chubbies, a stranger on the beach that like you never even talk to. Never, you'll never talk to them again or see them again. Rather, they're not going to go back home and like spread the news. Like I saw a guy in chubbies, <laughs> like he had long hair and, uh, yeah. and they're not going to talk about it. Definitely not a year from now. Definitely yeah. not any time from now. Like, it doesn't fucking matter. I think yeah. too many people put like too much like meat on it. Yeah. Like they're just like, oh, oh, I could never gonna... live it down. If yeah. someone sees me in a speedo bro. Yeah. And my very first, um, realization of that was when, when Prince died uh-huh. because, and Michael Jackson, right? Michael Jackson died what, a few years before, but, um, dude, I was just like, Oh my God, the world is crushed. But, I, we're talking about him now, but the majority of the people on earth right now are not talking about Michael Jackson. Right. They're not no. talking about Prince. No. They hear a song, they're like, oh, that's that's cool, he's dead. Like, great music. Yeah. But, and the the impact they made to us is huge, but nobody's talking about him. Right. Interesting, huh? Right? And yeah. I always bring up the whole, you their know. Their legacy lives through the music. Their, yeah, exactly. But, you know, it, but what I'm getting at, you know, back to the Chubb thing, yeah. like they're not talking about you no, past no. that day or no. past whatever, right? No. They're, so at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, dude. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just, just do it. Yeah. Would that be your same advice for anybody who's, you know, growing their hair out, having a problem, always questioning or... It's only a problem yeah. if you make it a problem. Yeah. Good advice. It's, you know, you're putting too much focus on it. Like, you know, throw on a hat. Oh, I'm tired of wearing hats. I can't wear a hat for work. I can't. Well, figure it out. Do you want long hair or not? Nobody's yeah. pulling a gun to your head and <laughs> making grow out your hair. Yeah. Like, at least don't bitch about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, look, just be willing to look stupid for six months right. or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, six, dude, six, eight months. Get through that. You're gold, right, dude? Especially with curly hair. I mean, you know, obviously speaking from experience, it's like, bro, I would get haircuts every Saturday on the Saturday mm. at my mom's shop. Yeah, clean cut, just perfect haircut all throughout, just all throughout my entire life until yeah. I was like 14 years old. Growing it out, now I had this big afro. I mean, how uncomfortable are you when your mom's a hairdresser, has her own shop, Yeah, you get like the cleanest cut kid in school all your life, and then now you have a freaking afro. Mind you, this is when we dyed our tips blonde, oh, okay. so my afro had all these random yellow spots, and oh, dude, it wow. was horrible. I nice. should send you guys a photo and, and to show your, your yeah. viewers and stuff, man. Like, Dude, we'll, let's throw it in the blog. For yeah, the, we, for will, we will. We um, will. It was terrible, but- you know, it's just like, yeah, I'm growing out my hair and this is the stage. Yeah. And then the mushroom, mushroom stage when it starts like falling a little bit. <laughs> but it's oh. still wide. It's still oh super my wide. God. <laughs> that, that's worse than the Afro. Okay. Afro is cool in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I don't think anybody's ever truly rocked like the mushroom. I don't know. Sure. It's, it's a weird thing. But. <laughs> As their stable style. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, so, okay. 22 years hair, hair veteran here. What, what's the latest, uh, you know, you having any issues, any of the climate lately been messing you up? What, what's going on? Any trims you've done or and just, no, just it's, it's, even keel? No, nothing new. Yeah, dude. It's, it's <laughs> been smooth sailing for years, man. I basically yeah. get a, um, a trim maybe every four to six months. You know, I'm going back to New Mexico, um, mid April. Yeah. You know, going to schedule a little, little snip, snip with my mom, do okay. a little, uh, what does she do? She, not the conditioning, the, uh, clarifying, oh, you know, okay. kind of get all the gunk out yeah, from yeah. pollution and just past product. Yeah. So yeah, I just, that's how I maintain essentially just, you know, have you ever done a hair months. mask? Um, is that kind of like a clarifier or I think it kind of, 
Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, because you basically put the clarifier leave in. Leave it in and, for and X that, amount of time. Well, and, and then you go under the, the heat. Okay, yeah. That's not and, so... Yeah, yeah. And that's what that's strips. Different. Okay. That's what strips okay. it all. And then you just like rinse the hell out of it. Mm. Get all that crap out. Yeah. Does yeah, your so. curls change with climate? Like if you go somewhere, maybe a little more humid or higher they, altitude or something, does anything change? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually they do, but... There's there's like tricks to be conscious of like, you know I I do some shows in Florida quite a bit and dude in the summer it is humid as hell like yeah. it's disgusting, <laughs> but what I do is is I make sure that before I leave the house, I make sure that that my hair is at least at least seventy five percent dry. Okay. Because I think the frizz comes when when the hair's wet and then you step out into the the wet. Yeah. Yeah the hair doesn't know what the hell to do. And then it dries super slow. So then it just dries just really frizzy. Okay. But if, if you can get your hair to dry at least 75%, it's pretty locked in. Yeah. And then you go out, it's not going to, it's not going to budge too much. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, so that's, Hold that's kind of my tip for the, the curly haired guys. You okay. know, the mistake we make is going out into the, the wetness the the wet air with yeah. wet hair. Yeah, oh, yeah. there you go. Cha ching. <laughs> Sounds like a song right there. Let's go. <laughs> hey, someone give me a notepad and a guitar. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You were telling me earlier about a interaction you had while you were traveling, uh, or you were at an event or something, and just some dude you've never seen before just came up to you and was like, El Sergio so Yeah, dude, dude the, I love this was just this past week, man. Okay. It, was, it was super cool, you know. I was at this, uh, the number one uh, networking event in America. It's called The Secret Knock. The Secret Knock? Dude, oh my God. Is the, it like a, uh, you know, convention center type event or um, smaller or what? It's invite only. Okay. So although it is smaller, it's still like a 300 person event. All right. And, uh, it was incredible, man. I was sitting at the table with, um, oh gosh, I don't remember his name. I'm not going to butcher it, but the guy who created Uggs was oh, sitting wow. right here. The guy who created Pictionary was right in front of me. Yeah. The guy who owns the the soccer team United in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I'm from, was sitting there. No way. Um, I heard, a, a, I was sitting next to, they call him Dr. Duck, a surgeon, <laughs> Like okay. one of the best in America. I mean, it was just insane. Like wild. Yeah, but anyway, um, the last night was a soiree, which was really well done. I mean, uh, you walk in and there's this like woman in this crazy suit that was like doing all this stretching and how do you call it contortion? <laughs> okay, wow, yeah, stuff yeah. and like there's just all this quirky <laughs> shit going on. Um, but yeah, dude. I was just like, yo, oh, <laughs> holy shit, what? You know, Sergio So from the Long Hairs, dude, I'm a big fan. I follow you guys. You've helped me out so much. So I'm like, dude, that's awesome. The fact that he said that, yeah, right? Yeah. That he's he's actually gotten some aid from the Long Hairs. That's awesome, dude. So, yeah, you guys are doing some amazing, amazing, amazing Hey, you too. Things. You are part of this community, man. And for you to have that uh, experience out there shows that uh, your mark is made on the community, which is pretty cool. Well, dude, th- th- I mean, that's definitely not the first time and not the last. I mean, I was in doing a show in Kansas City, sitting at a random bar <laughs> in the afternoon. You know, I had to have my afternoon margarita. And this, this young kid, man... Um, it was in Lenexa, Kansas, in fact. No way. Lenexa, yeah. And he was just like, Duh, uh, uh. I'm like, uh, uh, long hairs. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know. And then he started busting out like the long hairs showing me. He's like, dude, I follow you guys. You guys are awesome. I'm dude, like, how cool is that? That is freaking amazing. Yeah, it is really amazing, man. Like you guys and, you know, I'm so stoked that people are getting the tattoos. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dude, I know it's wild, huh? That is. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams people would be getting your logo on their body forever? No, never would have even guessed it. I mean, shit, we didn't even do it, and there was six other people who did it before we even did it. Really? Yeah, yeah. We got a great blog about it. That's Committed incredible. for life. I can't remember the exact title. Something like that. Uh, 
No, uh, long hairs for life. I think the title is, but we'll link it up here in the uh, the show notes. <laughs> That's incredible. But uh, yeah, man, there's a lot of people now who have the bounce shears tatted on them, and it's it's amazing. And no, never would have thought that, but it goes to that. It speaks to the community aspect, you know. Right, right. Um, I don't have any tattoos, but maybe my first one <laughs> might be. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I know. Who knows? And yeah, I don't know. I, when we set out to do this, we never thought like we would even get the ta- the tattoo. That's incredible, man. Uh, Dude, now let's, it does let's, feel amazing to have it here. Honestly. Does it now? Does everybody get it on their right forearm? Is that the, is that the deal uh, or just, people just get it well, wherever? Well, why we did was, uh, at least El Rubio and myself, it just felt like, uh, you know, this is, this is the, the flat, the badge, the flash. Like, right, right. You could just, you know, it's natural on the right arm to sure do it. But like, you know, at the same time, you don't have to get, no one needs to get the tattoo. Like your, your hair is, you're in, that's your card. Right. If you get the tattoo, it's amazing. Uh, it's another level of, uh, you know, I guess commitment to, to, to the brand, obviously you're committed to life. Uh, but. but also appreciation, man. I mean, people, you know, who, who don't appreciate the long hairs are not going to get a tattoo. So that's a huge sign of appreciation. Yeah, but there's plenty of people who do appreciate the long hairs that would never But I'm never just saying that's like the next level. To, like, exactly. yo, I freaking love them. I appreciate them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bam. Forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. No, for sure. Dude, now let, let's talk about the the uh, the great cut in 2024. Sure. Yeah. Like, are you guys stoked? I mean, that's a yes. dumb question. I'm going to answer that for you. Yes. So we just had a three-year anniversary, put out, uh, you know, a great video. Garve over here absolutely crushed that video from visually or visual conception to execution to delivery to everything. Garve freaking nailed it, man. It's just so cool. Uh, Dude, your, te- your team really, is amazing, man. Uh, your team is we got a lot of great guys here. You yeah. Know? We're really blessed. And I think we all have a sense of gratitude towards each other of that. We're all here building something. We're in a unique position. we get to do something that no one gets to do. Uh, well, not, not true. People can also do it, you know, right. Come on, you know, get on the team. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, we have a very strong sense of brotherhood team, team effort here and, and just driving towards goals and achieving and coming, you know, it comes back to like what we were talking about in the beginning. Like we've, we as a team have are having roadblocks, have plenty of problems, have plenty of things that we all have to overcome. I mean, almost every week, Garv, wouldn't you say there's something, whether it's like a little thing or something bigger or a shift in a schedule or a push in this up yeah. here, like almost every guy every week has to make a conscious, you know, decision and, and, and drive to achieve what the goal is for that week, uh, based on whatever the situation happened to be that week. So, right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're blessed. We're working hard. But it all comes back to the community, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're here to foster community, to, to to provide the content to this community, provide the products to this community, provide entertainment to this community. And that's why, uh, you know, we're just going to keep doing it and never stop. I love it, man. I love it. That's that's incredible. And, and you know, the way you guys give back to, I was talking to my mentor today, and it's cool. Oh, your you, question was on the great cut, though. I didn't even. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, like, no, no. Let's, but let's get, let's get back to the great. No, cut. I, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to that. So yeah. I was talking to my mentor, and I was just saying, you know, they they not only run a great a great company that's that's helping people on the daily, but you know, with this great cut thing. You know, I told him about it three years ago and how it went, and that you guys are doing it again in 2024. And he was blown away, man. He was blown mm-hmm. away. Yeah, that's you know? rad. Yeah. Well, 2024 is going to be bigger. It's going to be better. It's going to be just awesome, man. We're going to set a new record. We're going to, I mean, you were at the last one, you know, like the vibe was great. Yeah. uh, That same place. I think, yeah, we're going to basically take our blueprint and the goal is just to maximize the everything. So everything, the people, the hair donations, the cutting, the everything, you know, like let's, let's just, it worked. So right. we really don't need to change much. All we need is to 
get more more people there, more participation. Right. And the first one set the mark. This next one is gonna be like, dang, this is so amazing, you know? Yeah. And uh, if what I really want to achieve with the Great Cut, outside of the charity donations and the hair donations, is really that camaraderie, that energy that's in that building that day, that experience, that is like why, why anybody who comes to the event is going to leave and just be like, man, I was really part of something special. I'll remember this for the rest of my life. Absolutely. If we can create that experience for every single person that's in the building, whether you're donating, whether you're cutting, whether you're an entertainer, whether you're just a vendor, a sponsor, doesn't matter. However you can participate. If you're just a guest in, just want to come and party, however you want to participate, I want you to have that feeling and walk away and just be like, I'll always come to this event and I will never forget this. Right. Event. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, and, and you guys know, I, I would love to help with, you know, oh, whatever yeah, I have in my resources. So yeah, yeah whatever totally. you guys need, man, totally. I'm on board to help the long hairs. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, you got some good resources. I mean, you're running with some like uh, big players these days in San Diego. I mean, how did, how did you kind of get tapped into that scene and what is it like to, be you know you as the artist this kind of comes back to the confidence a little bit but you as the artist and entertainer and stuff and then you know these business millionaire business dudes <laughs> you know yeah. how, how do you fit in i guess is uh well I, question I, I think i don't know i the first first thing that comes to mind is like it's all attitude man you know because a lot of these highly, highly successful people, I learned this from my mentor today, you know, um, you can write a list down of like, okay, what, what do successful people have that make them successful? And you can write down a huge list. Now you can break the list into two. Is that a skill or is that an attitude? Mm. And you'll quickly find that 80% of them, it's attitude that contribute to the success. Yeah. So, so I, I think, you know, going back to it, it's just, I, I think attitude is the main thing, man. A and the way I work it is I don't need anything from anybody. I want to build relationships. Yeah. I truly want to, to help you, um, in whatever you need, like, how can I contribute to what you do? Mm. And if you bring that energy instead of like, Oh, I need to meet this successful guy because I want this. Yeah. It's like, ah, you've almost lost the game already. Not to say that you can't get to that person and become friends with them, but you know, the way the way I work it, man, it's just it's attitude. Be cool. Don't be too eager. Be yourself. Mm. These successful people can smell bullshit from a thousand miles away. You know, and yeah. if you have a good attitude, you have a good self image. That's why it's so important to work on yourself first mm -hmm. in order to get what you want. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because if you're not confident in yourself and you don't have a good self image, like you're you just can't not have that good attitude. You, you can't. Yeah. You can't. And these successful people are very smart people. You can't hang with the big dogs if if you're peeing like a puppy, you don't know who you are and you don't know sure. you know. Yeah, yeah. So so that's just you know and then and then you consciously build a relationship. Send a text every once in a while. You know, if one of your successful friends smokes cigars, like I'll freaking smoke a cigar and I'll be like, hey man, thinking of you, have an amazing week. Yeah, yeah. They like to, people will never get tired of you thinking about them. Sure. People will never get tired of hearing I love you from the people that they love. Yeah, yeah. You will never get tired of it. Yeah, that's So good. with that in mind, yeah, just. I think that's, uh, I mean, that's good, man. And a lot of, I know I'm not great at this, but telling the people, even my closest friends that I've known my whole life, uh, telling them that, just sending them a text like, hey, bro, love you, man. Just that's it. That's all I want to say. Dude. Like, okay. You know, like and and how, how many times, <laughs> let's just say, how many times in the past week have you thought about somebody and like, man, I fucking love that guy. Right. And then you just go about your day. Right. Dude. Fire, trust me. Fire a text Spend right 10 there. seconds. <laughs> getting your phone, hitting their name under contact, say, I love you, bro. I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Yeah. 
dude, that'll make that'll make their whole week, dude. Yeah, like yeah. their whole month or whatever. And you don't know what they're going through. Right. Good point. I was about a to lot. Say of, a lot thing. of times, like you know, a lot of these, you know, big successful big dogs are, they have a lot of shit going on in business. Like yeah. you know, they may be failing, they may be winning, but there's some shit going on at all times, right. really. For everybody. Yeah, for yeah. everybody. It's whoever it is. If it's your so, best bro, friend from high school or. Your cousin or somebody you, you, haven't you talked plug to in, in yeah, you years. plug in that. I love you, bro. Yeah, I'm thinking about you. Yeah, they'll never get tired of hearing it. Yeah. In fact, you can send that same text every week and be <laughs> like, "Wow, they actually fucking busted out their phone," and that's awesome. They're thinking about me all the time. Like that's yeah. cool, dude. Yeah, that is. You know. Well, when's it get creepy? Every week. What if we did five well, weeks in a row? That's a little much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, switch up the wording a little bit. <laughs> hey, bro, let's go out to lunch. I'm thinking about you. <laughs> You're right. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, good stuff, man. Yeah, um, so, yeah, just know yourself, man. Be confident first and and just uh, keep building, man. Yeah, do this. Well, what keep we're here building. to do. Just keep building, guys. Hey, it's... El Sergio man, thank you so much for being on. This is an awesome conversation. Why Thanks, don't you brother. just let the good, fine people, uh, our viewers here, know where they can find you, how they follow you, and uh, you know how they could be part of what you're doing. Yeah, sounds good. Um, you know, follow me on on Instagram, Sergio's Art and Music, all one word. Sergio's FineArt.com is my art website. You can check out you know videos of me doing some cool time lapse stuff. Uh, some of my new paintings and some of the events coming up. Uh, Sergio Gutierrez Music.com. That's S E R G I O G U T I E R R E Z Music.com. Uh, that has all my shows posted. Uh, I update it every week. And you'll see all the all the cool stuff I'm doing and truly and helping and the And your world. NFTs, bro. Come on. What, NFTs. What? Oh, <laughs> NFTs. Yeah, well, that's all on my art website, right? Hit up sergiosfineart.com, and there's a big uh, NFT link. And uh, I'm happy to be in that space because it's, yeah. it's the new shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Got to be in on shit. that new new. Yeah, on that new new. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, too, man. Like, whatever business you're in, you have to keep up with the times, bro. Oh, yeah. You gotta you adapt. To. You gotta change. You gotta adapt. So totally. Yeah, dude. Thanks for having me, brother. Dude, you're the it man. Was awesome. You're inspiration to us. Thank you for talking about confidence, uh, masculinity, and community. And uh, that's what we're here to do: is build those Love three it. things. So Love you're it. a great example for everybody out there. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep inspiring us all. So we'll uh, have you on for another show here in the future, and you'll definitely be at the Great Cut. Sounds good. Well, in the words of these guys. Great show, man. Love you, bro. I love you, bro. Thank you.